talking about the last part of going back is a lot of the games you're going to play and a lot of the fields that you're going to play on are going to have fences. And as you go back, you always have to be aware that there's going to be a fence at some point in time. So one thing, as we kind of cover the mechanics and just the spatial awareness of preparing for the fence, highly recommend if you've not played on that field before or you just haven't done it, go out and actually see how big that warning track is and get a mental note of how many strides you have to get to the fence so that when somebody, and hopefully your outfield's communicating, yeah. says fence or says track, yeah. you're already mentally prepared to say, okay, I have two steps. You're gonna start to you know, gear down a little bit. You're gonna start to prepare for where that fence is so that you don't hit it at full speed. Cause that's right. the last thing we wanna see is having people run into the wall full speed cause that's how people get hurt. Yes. Um, so Cam's gonna cover a little of the mechanics of what you're thinking about as you're going back and knowing that the fence is approaching. Yeah, so there's, there's kind of two elements to this. Uh, one of those elements is you personally mentally and the other element again is your teammate so Mentally yourself things you're thinking when you're going back if you get that ball comes off the bat You know that it's either gonna get somewhat close to that fence or that the fence is gonna come into some sort of play You basically have to have a mental note a mental awareness of how far away you are now You don't need to know the exact amount, but you need to know general proximity so Things I think about when I'm getting ready to come back on a ball like that is I kind of have an idea how far away I am and I know I'm going to have to get there. So as I'm going back, I make sure that I cat or that I, I perceive the ball correctly first. So I'm going backwards. I know I'm a little closer than I normally would be, but I know I'm not too close to the fence yet. And I make sure I'm moving at the right speed and the right direction to get to where that thing's going to end up. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing, once you've done that, you should have a pretty good mental note of, if I looked away from that ball for a split second to check my fence, I know right back to where to look. So that way I've, I've tracked it long enough, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I can check my fence, I can look back. Now normally I'm gonna be running, I'm not gonna be walking like this. So I'm checking my ball, checking my fence, and if I'm getting this close, especially if one of my teammates is yelling track or something like that, I can get a hand out and that way, if I touch the fence, I know I've only got so far and I'm not gonna just shoulder or head into that fence. A really big part of those plays getting made is your teammates. So I usually am a corner outfielder. Uh, I, at least in my experience, most of the time the center fielder seems to get more of those back to the wall. I don't know if it's just because sometimes center field's a little bit deeper and there's just more balls that kind of stay in the park or get really close. But I know I'm always trying to yell when they get to the warning track, if you have a warning track, you yell track. And usually when you hear that as, as the, the fielder, when you hear track, you know you've got two, maybe three steps if you're running before you hit that wall. So usually you hear track, you know, I don't have a whole lot of room left. And then if, again, if your teammates are helping you out, they're not just gonna yell track, but then once you're about a step away from that wall or maybe two steps away from that wall, they're gonna yell fence. And that way you know you've only got 10 feet at most. So to kind of see what that looks like in semi full speed, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be playing. I'm gonna catch that ball, it's gonna be hit. I'm gonna track it, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna look back, I'm gonna find it. And this is how I'm gonna to get to it. It's gonna be, again, find the ball, track it first, find the fence yourself, and make sure you're listening to your teammates because they are an invaluable part of that play getting made. So make sure you're able to do all those. It takes a little bit of practice, takes a little bit of communication, but again, if you're playing as a team, in my opinion, the center fielder is always talking to the right fielder, always talking to the left fielder. Between every play, whether it's communication about a hitter or whatever, there should be that communication happening all the time anyway, so it shouldn't be much to just add that. Again, if I'm the center fielder and I'm going back, chances are the left fielder and the right fielder can't do anything about that ball physically, so they might as well do it verbally and mentally, so that way they can take a little bit of that load off the player that's trying to catch the ball. And a lot of it, again, comes back to just knowing your field and really yes. having that good understanding of how wide is my warning track? How hard is the fence? You know, is it a tall fence or a short fence? Something you got to consider as you're going back is you 
you really get a good read on that ball, you want to understand, am I going to have enough time to get there at the fence or do I need to pull off and prepare to field that off the fence on the bounce? Because the last thing you want to see is if you can't get to it because it's going to go over your head, you don't want it to hit off the fence and start running back towards the infield because then you got to chase it. Right. But really get that good read and then make the determination, do I need to pull back and field it off the wall because I'm not going to have enough time to get there. Yeah, that's a that's a really big deal when you play. Like we've played a lot of games at Big League Dreams recently and the fences there are actually very solid. So when it hits, it bounces off with a, with a fair amount of, of force. So on those, you do have to be cognizant of, okay, I'm not gonna get to that ball or it's not one that I need to try for actually catching it. So I need to prepare myself whatever angle it's coming in on that I need to be ready to, uh, to get there. Now, this actually happened to me yesterday. I was playing left field at Big League Dreams uh, Yankee Stadium. And in the corners of Old Yankee, they curl in. And so they hit one that was just a, it was just a line drive, bounce once, hit the wall but it hit that curl and it was the first play I'd had off the wall that day and didn't actually realize they were curled so bad. So when it hit that angle, it actually bounced off this way instead of bouncing straight back at me, which is what I'm used to. So I had to take that mental note after the first time and then obviously it didn't happen again, but those are things, again, just kind of awareness of the field you're playing on, like Jason was saying. Uh, second thing, if you're playing someplace that doesn't have that hard fence, it's maybe like here where you've got a chain link fence, this is gonna absorb a ton of that and it's barely going to bounce off so you know that if that ball's coming back and it's coming back hot you don't have to stop 20 feet back let it bounce so that way you can play it off the wall you can really try it all the way to here because you have a lot of extra time to to take care of it because it's not going to be rolling around the outfield and end up 40 feet away from you it's going to end up 10 feet away from you you can pick it up and throw it you're gonna be able to prevent those extra bases. Thank you for watching everyone, we really appreciate it. Depending on what platform you're watching us on, like, subscribe, leave us a comment, anything you can do to let us know that you like what we're doing here, we really appreciate it, we'll see you next time.